So first of all, welcome and a big thank you to all of you. Um, some of you don't know me by my face because we've only done email or texting. Uh, I'm Janice Jorgensen and I have been the compiler here in this uh, CBC, I think since 2014. And uh, this is my last year. Uh, decided it's time for me to move on, time for new people to come in and, and revamp, mm -hmm. redo, whatever. Um, so uh, I'm, it, it doesn't stop. Uh, this all goes on until about mid-February when the final information goes into the National Audubon Society. So what I'd like to first do briefly is just have you introduce yourself, say where you live and what area you have and your favorite bird just as a way to like break the ice so i'm gonna i'm looking this way and so i'm gonna go left to right linda you're first up you're up on my upper left so i'll call you out uh call not call you out but call you so you could go next linda and blaze go so, for it linda the salad and blaze the salad oh uh, we are covering <laughs> Tom Gannon's 23 area, along with Deb Oakley and Hobie Islin. And uh, there's more members of our team this year. Um, Mary Howley and her husband, and Shirley Hammersmith. And so we're area 23 in Northampton. And what was your other question? <laughs> Favorite birds. Oh, your favorite bird, please. I don't have one yet. Oh, come on. <laughs> Whatever Linda's favorite is, that's mine. Whatever rare bird we find <laughs> this year will be our favorite bird. Yes. I'll leave it up to Deb to tell us. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, David Gross? You're muted. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Gross. I, uh, I live in Pelham, right across the road from the Quabbin. I... Um, am a, a brand new area leader along co-leader with Dave Pritchard um, of Area 25. That's the area that Bob Zimmerman had for a long time. And I went with him for many years in that area. Um, and favorite bird, well, I don't know, yellow warbler, perhaps. That was what really got me hooked in the beginning of my birding life. Okay, thanks, David. Uh, David Peak jones Yes, I'm David Pick jones I've been the leader of Area 3 for quite a while. That's an area around Mount Warner in Hadley. I actually live in East Hampton. Um, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight people Um who are going to be helping us this year. Janice always uh, always finds lots of people to help us, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know them until the morning that they show up. So it's a little uh, it's a little embarrassing for me as a leader. But um, let's see, my favorite bird. Well, my favorite bird has to be the Australian magpie. But that's an Australian bird. We don't get very many of them on the Christmas count. Um, <laughs> my favorite local bird has to be Ruby Crown Kinglet. Um, and as David mentioned about yellow warblers, I think it was, I think it was a Ruby Crown Kinglet in a very nondescript tree in Arcadia in April one year that just really got me going. It just blew my socks off. Um, so that's still my that's still my fave. <laughs> okay, thank you, David. Uh, uh, and yes, I as there are people who struggle in and want to join, then I say, okay, I think our air can take them. Right? Uh, yeah. Besides John John Green's Mariana. Okay, I'm Mariana. I'm in Area Twenty Nine, which is um, it's in Hatfield. West Hatfield and near the watershed area of Hatfield, Westbrook Road, and um, over towards Linseed Road and a little bit of Coles Meadow Road. 
Um, and of course, we get the great uh, five and ten route that we have we make uh, along the way. Um, so uh, there are usually a small group of us. It's more of a car birding for us. Um, and um, yeah, this is my fourth year. I think I've been doing this, and I live in Whaley. Okay. And my bird, yeah, my bird. Well, when it first got me hooked on birding is I was with um, I was hiking about ready to hike up to um, the jack the jackknife ridge I guess over in Katahdin and we were um, so uh, we were in a near a pond uh, actually a wetland and there were many many um, cedar wax wings and so that's what hooked me up into uh, birding so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mariana. Okay. Uh, Deb and or Deb and Hobie on the same one? Yes. Okay. I see Hobie, but I saw Deb earlier. <laughs> You're muted, Hobie. You're muted. Still muted. All right. There it is. How's that better? Uh huh. Sorry about that. Um, uh, Deb Oakley and Blaze and Linda and Mary Cowie and uh, and the cast of thousands apparently are are going to be doing Tom Ganyon's Area Twenty Three, uh, which we have done for the past I don't know seven six seven eight years, um, and um, let's see. I guess my favorite bird, the bird that I'd be looking for most well a couple of them one would be the winter wren and the other would be uh hermit thrush uh don't know if any hermit thrush is left but uh but uh we never know i've, I've, I've seen him recently at uh at fitzgerald lake so i'm hopeful um and that's what you all have to say okay thanks hobie katie um, hi i'm katie um i live in florence and this is my third year, I think, leading the Hatfield Area 35 solo. Um, I co-led it for you before that. So um, it's a really fun area. Um, my favorite bird that I know we're not going to find is the European robin. Um, <laughs> but I will say I would love to find a snow goose because I still need one for my life list. And I know they're kind of, they're circling around the area right now. So hopefully one lands in uh, either a great pond or those fields. So fingers crossed. Yeah, great. Katie has Great Pond. If those of you might not know it by her area number, but know it by Great Pond. Sam? Hello, um, I'm Sam McGillum. Uh I live up in Tur Tur Turner's Falls, and I'm covering Area 11 in South Amherst. I've been doing this area for seven years, I guess, with Malarcia, Marithu, and we are being joined by um, Maya Rap Rap Rapapur and Elias Bradley this year. So, and uh, favorite bird is white throated sparrow. Okay, we should have plenty of those, Sam. Thank you. Matthew, and is it Adriana? Hi, um, I'm Adriana. Um, Matt and I are going to be covering Area 5, um, Orchard Hill. We live in Sunderland, and um, my favorite bird is an American woodcock. Huh. And my favorite bird is, it always changes, but... Um, Probably Brian Creeper is my favorite bird that we're likely to see. Um, I also love pine grosbeaks, beaks, but I don't think it's going to be a big winter for those if the forecast is correct. Um, and we have a good amount of people in our group um, from the UMass Bird Club and if, uh, one or two of Adriana's coworkers as well. Terrific. Uh, and, and I thank you so much, Matthew and Adriana, for coming forward when we were like, oh, geez. Yeah. Who's going to cover that area? <laughs> We're excited. Yeah, we did it with, it was previously Nate Center's area, um, but I understand he has a conflict. We we did it with him last year. Um, yeah. yeah. And it, it was nice. 
and I sent out an SOS who on the UMass Bird Club might cover that area for us. And, and Matt and Adriana came forward. So we thank you. Bill? Oh, I'm Bill Benner. Um, I live in Waitley. I'm Ariana, another Waitley person. Um, and I, uh, me and Joe Wazinski and Andrew McGee have been doing Area 13 for, I think this might be our 20th year together. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and Area 13 is essentially Mitch's Marina and Artsbrook School, and then some things in between those places. And my favorite bird, I would say, is Evening Grosbeak, um, which we often get at our feeder. So it's great. Terrific. Sue? You're muted. Still muted. Hi, I'm Sue Emerson and Sally and I uh, are in Ed 17 one, one, which is Granby and South Hadley. And so we've been doing this for many, many years. We lost our partner. Uh, Elaine Perinsky this year, which is unfortunate. So it's just two of us. And I see that, uh, oh, who is it? Megadipa has posted a thing for some birders to do around Mount Holyoke College. Now that's part of our area that we kind of gave up several years ago to uh, the professor down there who is not doing it any longer. So. I don't know if we're going to be covering some of that area or not. So you'll tell me <laughs> if Mer 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 Megadipa gets some response. We'll keep you informed, Sue. Uh, it was like a sort of a last ditch effort. So don't worry. I just so. sent an email out and I CC'd y'all. Good. We've been doing this, I don't know how many hundred years, <laughs> but yeah. it's a long time. Maybe it's my last. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sue. Brian. Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm doing uh, Area 33. This is my first time leading. Um, uh, last year, I co-led with, with Greg Brown, um, but he has a schedule conflict this year. Um, and uh, I live in Ware, um, and my favorite local bird is probably a Merlin, but I haven't had one on the count for the last two years, so we'll see. <laughs> well, I might mean, be the, might in be our the area. year, Brian. Might be the year. Molly, thank you, Brian. Hi. Um, I'm Molly. Um, I cover area 24, which is in the far western part of the circle. It's on the western border of Northampton. And it's a pretty big area, so we drive part of it and get out along the way. And there's another <clears throat> another part of our team that does another part of it. But I've been doing it for, I counted up, I think it's been 25 years, actually. I've been doing this route, and I've been leading it now probably for the last at least 10. Um, and so we have our traditional things that we have to say at certain stops. We have to make the same remarks every time. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. My favorite bird overall is the northern oriole, because I like how diverse they are in the songs that they sing. And um, I mean, I like how each male has its own song. And um, let's see, but in the winter, I would love to see a Merlin, that would be so cool. Um, I don't think we have yet, but maybe a winter wren, we haven't seen one of those in many years, so that would be cool. Okay, thank you, Molly. Uh, Michelle? Good evening. Michelle Larkins, I live in Boston. Unfortunately, the Boston and uh, and Hampshire are on the same day, so I'm going to be covering Jamaica Plain in Boston, and I am here to learn because it's going to be my first year kind of le leading a group. Okay. <clears throat> and and they don't do this kind of thing in, in Boston? No, but if, I'm going to suggest it. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah, and I've recruited six people for our group so all right I'm good 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 and we have 10 
Wow. Okay, Megadeepa. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, uh, my name is Meghodipa. Um, I am leading Area 9, which is um, kind of a weird strip that runs along Hadley and South Amherst. Um, so like Route 9 and the Rail Trail, but also the um, Fort River Refuge and Hickory Ridge, Far Hickory Ridge, Bramble Hill Farm, Large Hill Conservation Area. It's uh, it's very long. So um, I think I started helping out, um, this might be my fourth year with the Hickory Ridge section because people would start off at the Hadley end and by the time they made it to the Amherst end, it um, never really got covered properly. We actually have a pretty big team, like listening to he'll talk about it, I'm just realizing. Um, might might have like 15 people this year um, doing an event uh, with the Anti-Racist Collective of Avid Birders um, and Bramble Hill Farm. Um, so that's a good chunk of people. And um, we're missing, uh, like Josh, Rose and I are the leaders, um, but we're missing a lot of uh, our regular Sam Zhang. Chris Page um, used to be the leader, um, no longer lives here. Ted and like we're missing a lot of people. So it's going to be a lot of enthusiasm, making up for experience, which I think counts for a lot as we learned last year. Um, I think we found like 58 species last year, which like considering we don't have access to the water or the river, I thought that was pretty cool, but yeah, we'll make up for it in enthusiasm. Um, I think the other question was- Your favorite um, bird. Favorite bird? That's a really hard one. Um, Don't. The Asian curious. Paradise Flycatcher has always been a favorite, but I think for the Christmas bird count, I'm missing a hermit thrush oh. on Hickory Ridge. Like I've seen some wild things on there over there, but somehow never a hermit thrush um, or even like heard one. Um, so that's what I hope I find this year. Um, and before Hickory Ridge, I used to cover the Mount Fuller College campus, which is, I think, what um, I was talking to Sue and Janice about. Um, but yeah, I hope I find a hermit thrush. I hope it doesn't rain because that section of South Amherst just like becomes a bog. Like it, you will like sink a foot in when there's the littlest amount of rain. So I'm a little worried about that. Okay, thanks, Megadeepa. Uh, Steph? Hi, I'm Steph. I work on Area 21 with John Green. We meet up at the Northampton Airport. Um, I've been helping him for a few years with the data entry. He still leads the, the volunteers and the in-person um, part of our group. And I think my favorite bird is probably the black cap chickadee because they're so small and yet still so feisty. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Uh, Henry, welcome back to uh, Como Esta. Thank you. I'm back, yep, um, two days ago. Okay. I'm in, I do area two, and uh, I've lost some of my best birders, though, so it's just me and um, uh, whatever his name is. I can't remember, but um, we're looking for someone else to join us, someone with better hearing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And your favorite bird, Henry? Here or in Brazil and Argentina. It, it, any place. Where the heck do you think? Asshole? I saw a uh, blonde crested woodpecker that was really yeah, quite okay. spectacular. Blonde crested woodpecker. All right. Okay. I haven't seen one of those. Um, Scott? All right. Hang on. OK. There we go. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, Scott. How are you doing? Not too bad. I do Area 8, um, Hadley Cove through the Honey Pot, Aquabita Road up to North Hadley. And um, I've been doing it for, I don't know, a long time. 40-something <laughs> years now. So, um, so other than that, I mean, uh, favorite bird is Evening Grosbeak. I really don't count on seeing any of them <laughs> on this count. But, um, but 
back in the day, you know, it was not a big deal. Back in the seventies, it was not a big deal. There's oh, finally go through twenty three people. At, at dozens and dozens and dozens of evening roast weeks back in the seventies, and if you look back in your numbers. I think Northampton count had thousands uh, back in the seventies and the sixties, and it was amazing. But they've been pretty scarce the last, you know, twenty or so years. Um, other than that, it's um, it'd be interesting count. I mean, most of the snow is gone. I don't see any more coming. It's pretty mild out now. It's like fifty nine degrees out <laughs> at my house, so. Uh, that'll slow down some of the, be interesting to see how the rain, you know, all the flooding affects some of our waterfowl totals coming up on Sunday. Um, other than that, who knows what's out there? There's a lot of weird stuff around New England. Um, there's a couple Bullock's Orioles, one in New Hampshire, one in Vermont. Uh, there's been Lapland Longspurs in the East Meadows, uh, although the, all, it, they're going to be a little harder to find. Now that the snow's gone, yeah. but there's up to six out there. So, yeah, you just never, never know what's gonna what's gonna turn up. Okay, thank you, yeah. Scott. Um, how many you have on your team so far, Scott? Well, uh, <laughs> one anyway. Maybe another one. So I might have three. Okay. okay. Yeah. And Mary. Hi, I'm Mary Cowie. I live in Florence, um, and I will be part of the Area 23 team, so with Linda and Blaze and Deb and Hobie. So I'll be part of a pod of five or six that'll be covering other area parts of Area 23 that hadn't been able to be covered in recent years. But um, so we're looking forward to covering some more spots. Good. Favorite bird is the great blue heron, which I don't expect to see this weekend. We have had them. Not often, but we have had them. So thank you, Mary. All right. So I'm area three. Uh, I have been, I was on this team before I was the, the compiler. And my favorite bird overall is the Carolina wren. I love its little perkiness and its little tail and it and they are now coming to my uh, suet feeder. Uh, and I wanted to tell Scott, yesterday in Aquavita, we had six snow geese. Who else wanted snow geese? Somebody wanted snow geese. And we had one blue morph in that group. On Aquavita Road? Yeah. They landed with a meow, boom. Did they, and... were they on Aquavita Road or their flyovers? No, well they, well, they were flying over and then they landed. Oh, wow. And uh, we have cool. pictures. We have pictures. So, I don't think uh, I have one for mine. How but far I'm... south? How far south does the circle go? Does it go down to McCray's Farm? Yes. Does it go down farther than that? No, I'll show you. I have one of my things is the map, but it doesn't go down to the, like the, where the Iceland gull was. Well, how about was... how about um, to the circle down there? There's a Cape May warbler reported on Woodbridge Road in South Hadley. I don't have the exact address, but I'll show you how we can find out <laughs> if it's in the circle. And, and uh, Bill and Jim Laffley, who are not here today, they're at meetings and whatever. Uh, the the black-bellied whistling duck is in their area, which is, I think, area 16. And, okay. and Jim said, I'm going there Friday because it's during count week. If I somehow it's not, I'm going to get it for count week at least, if it's not there on Sunday. But I think so it'll be there. On your it's map, not going in. Yeah, it's just to look at 10 Woodbridge Road. It's near the it's near the rotary. I don't know how far the circle extends, but there's a Cape May Warbler down there. All right. Uh, um, keep that let's get started and we'll show, I'll show, look on the, on the map with you so that everybody okay. can see that. Okay. Okay. Now, sure. uh, I'm if you have a question, you can, uh, I'm trying not to necessarily look at the chat because I've got too many things going on, but just unmute your mic and ask your question if it's fitting to that topic. Otherwise, we'll take the questions that are like off, off the specific subject that we're doing now at the end. Make sense? Okay. 
So here's the deal. Our 90th year, it's a sad, it's a very positive, but it's also a very sad year because we have lost three leaders this year. We lost uh, um, Bob Zimmerman, who had where David Gross and a co another co-leader is in Area 25, which is Fitzgerald Lake in, in Northampton. We lost Elaine Perinsky, who had been doing the CBC and the Quabbin CBC for ages, and that was Area 17. And we lost Ann Can, who did uh, what I most recently knew that she would always do was Applewood. And uh, there was a couple of times she had a clay colored sparrow and uh, she said, Janice, I'll get the, the, the elders here to do it and we'll look at our feeders. So um, it, we're very sorry that, and we're sort of honoring them this year, uh, but we have new leaders coming forward who have stepped in and we welcome you and thank you very, very much. So this is MANO, what the heck is MANO? M-A stands for Massachusetts, N-O is Northampton. It's a question I get a lot. You may have people in your group say, what, what the, why is she always saying MANO? What does that mean? But that's what it stands for. And all the circles everywhere are four letters. Um, the one I work closely with in Panama is RPPL, and it stands for the Republic of Panama. Puerto Lara, which is the name of their community. So if you look at other, you go to other counts, you can maybe figure out the, the first two letters are always the state in the United States. It's actually the 125th year for National Audubon. Um, our count started the first year in 1934 with 25 people. Our highest year has been 271. We're going to come close this year, it seems like. And the first year there was 1,068 birds and our biggest year, biggest amount of birds were 111,225 birds. We, now what do you think was going on for us to get a, that many, over 100,000 birds? Anybody have any idea? A storm? Well, effort. Starlings. 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 Starlings are part. But what else, were, what Big other things? Robin roosts. Robin roosts, starlings, and what else was uncapped? Canada geese? No. no. Crows. What the, about crow the, flights? No. Or I didn't, the thing that was uncapped were all the, all the dumps. Right, the gulls. The gulls. And there were gulls and gulls and more gulls in the Hadley, in all of the dumps. And this minute that they got capped, down down went the numbers. And so we average, in the last three, five years, we're in the 40s, 42, 43, 44,000. So um, here is what, what, what is this bird? Oh, sorry. Never mind. It's okay. Oh, I thought you Somebody want to tell us what that bird is? It was taking a picture during one of our CBCs. That's a black bird. Yes. So all the pictures you're going to see were taken during our CBCs and, you know, submitted for their rare birds. This mm. was by Jeremy Coleman. Uh, the CBCs, just a little history. People say, are they worldwide? No, they're only in North and South America and the Pacific, sort of all the things that the U.S. owns. So they're in Hawaii, they're in Guam, Marshall Islands, which you see out here. Those are those places. But these are all the circles. Well, maybe more than just those circles. But there's about 2,600 circles. Isn't there a South Pole count? Oh, uh, where? Isn't there a South Pole count? So, I feel like there's. Like down here? A, down here? Well, I, f Lower? I, feel like there's a, I feel like there's a Christmas count at one of the two poles. Either the North Pole or the South. I think it was the South Pole. Uh, I don't know that. Huh. But right. I know there's some count up here, and what they get are like three ravens the whole day. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to check that out. That's it. So here is our circle. Um, and the center is here in the in Scott's. Right, since your place, Scott. 
I, I, it, um, I'm, a little, I'm a little off. I should, the map should be here, should be here. Yeah. The arrow should be here. And it's actually like on a gravestone. I mean, this is just bizarre. I have never gone to figure out which gravestone, but it is on a gravestone. Um, I'm going to show you. So uh, the, I think the black bellied is down here in this area. And I will switch over it a little bit later to the actual map and we'll, we'll jump in and find out exactly the address. So Scott, if you can get the exact address, we can uh, pop it and find it. So that's our circle. Now, these are again pictures that were taken on another count a couple years ago. Anybody claim these on their in their in their area? No. Okay. Well, Go I ahead. have had par I have had par we have had peregrine in area three, and we've have had uh what is that chipping sparrow we've had a chipping yeah. sparrow and we've had red-shouldered hawk over the years yeah we had a red-shouldered hawk last year i think okay we had chipping sparrows last year good okay so as a leader cbc leader this is i'm opening it. what do you think you're supposed to do or what have we tried to tell you to do or what have you read that CBC leaders do? Well, I'll tell you the part of the leading that I always feel like I have to do, and it's really <laughs> it's really onerous because I just want to get out and count birds. But um, I feel like the piece that that the leader has to do because nobody else is going to want to do it is to try to make sure we get a good effort data from everybody. Um, and that's quite challenging because nobody else wants to get, nobody else wants to collect effort data either. We just want to count birds. Um, but I always feel like that's what I do. So I try to I try to give people a work, I try to give all my subgroups a worksheet to try to make it easier for them to, to record their miles and their distance walked and their time walked and their time in the car so that so that we have a chance of getting good effort data out of out of the area. Um, so so that other than trying to divide people up into groups so that everybody has something meaningful to do, that's really the thing that I think of as my job. And it is. <laughs> unfortunately and it's never the effort is always drives us all crazy what else do you think a leader does somebody else want to include thank you david so maybe it's only effort that you have to do you have to figure out where you're going to meet and whether you're going to meet for breakfast <laughs> okay <laughs> and where do you go molly Maybe we well, should. We always ahead. used to. We always used to go to the Look Diner, but that went out of business, and and Monica would always order the same eggs Benedict, but then we started going to Miss Flo's Diner, um, and then COVID happened. We stopped going anywhere, but then um, Miss Flo's changed its hours. It doesn't open till eight. So this year we're going to go to Bread Euphoria. Okay, <laughs> good for you. Anybody else? What do leaders do? You who are the new leaders, are there things that you think of that you're going to have to do that or wonder about? Ensure data quality. I was kind of thinking about how. Right. Go ahead and speak up. Um, I was also going to say enter data. Um, and I'm not sure if this is mentioned already, but just. Uh, make sure that everybody is being assigned to the right, you know, make sure that everyone knows where to go. Right. It's very important. Very important. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I try to assess like um, for new people, what their ability is and mm -hmm. make sure that if it's somebody who's not very skilled, that they're 
teamed up with somebody who knows what they're doing. Great. And, you know, make sure people ahead of time, make sure they tell them to bring their binoculars and their warm clothes and their snack and the water and all that. Okay, exactly. Uh, anybody else have something to add? So far, everybody's on target. I think definitely making sure everyone has everyone else's cell phone in case there's any issues. Everyone has, you know, there's a lot of like car burning and spots that aren't really named. So making sure everyone has the right kind of coordinates of where they need to go if they're using like a, a map. Okay. App Great. Service. So just making sure everyone gets to the right place and everyone can be in contact with everybody else. Absolutely. And these are the things that I said put it in putting together and I think that they um what did I do oh. one big thing okay I worked at FEMA all right federal emergency management so safety is always one of those huge things that comes up uh so people are understand food water cell phone do they have your phone do you have their phone can they take breaks what if they you know it <laughs> could be raining and damp it's a day that maybe they need to stop for a while and warm up uh or they're not going to be useful to you um another one is tell people this is a time really to have fun uh i think also they need to know what katie talked about where are they birding do they have maps to, can you get maps from online and not that you need to print them or any but you might need to send them to them saying here i want you to have this handy or on your phone or on your ipad or whatever um there's a whole thing of bird IDing. uh so again when we talked about matching up uh i have a a little question a five question thing where people can rate themselves that we typically use with new people to say tell me how you are and that helps me uh decide or assign somebody to what group uh and people tell us i don't know anything I'm going, I'm just going, but they have eyes and ears. Right. Um, a, another one is so exactly what was mentioned, like you want your not so good birder with a good birder so that the IDs are correct. Uh, you may want to encourage your people to use an eBird trip report. And I'll show you some of you, if you're interested, how th that works. And, and the rare birds, um, hopefully, they take photos. They have a smartphone. They always, you know, photos are 100% uh, are better. Uh, Scott, who is with us today, is the person who all the rare birds go through. That's not me. Um, and so if, you, if people take a picture or they write it up, it passes his eyes. Thank you, Scott, for that. Uh, another one is the effort, driving time and dis driving time and distance. Uh, and um, we want to be, and walking time and distance. And I think I left off one that you mentioned, David. Uh, it's time, no, distance, think, and time, distance, and. No, I think that covers it. Uh, okay. in, in your Google form that you distributed, it, it calls for the total time spent, but that's going to be the aggregation of driving time and walking time. Plus those four things, driving time and distance, walking time and distance. So those are the, those are the things we're supposed to collect. Yeah. Doesn't it include the people? Isn't yeah. it multiplied by the people? How many people are included? It is, but it's uh, it's by groups that you have. So if you start with four people and that's one party, and then they split, and, and they go, that's two more parties. So now you have three parties, and one of those second parties might go for longer or shorter than the first one and go a dif different time. So it's really breaking down all those groups. That's the part that drives us all crazy, including me, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, it and, doesn't matter and, how many people are in each party. It's really the yes. party times it's, time and distance. Yeah, but okay. it does matter how many people are in the party and how many break off. Because uh, it's a- Well, if I can chime in, Mary, yeah. it, it, it's, it, it doesn't matter how many people are in the party, but that's not the critical piece. The critical piece is how many different parties do you have operating in your area? A party being one to however many are in a subgroup. So any group that are by themselves is a party. So 
the way to try to get a handle on this is to just well the way I've tried to get a handle on it is to is to have these little sheets of paper that I hand out to everybody who's going out as a subgroup that allows them to record those four things driving time and distance walking time and distance so that for any group that goes by itself and separates from the rest of your counters they should be collecting that information if that if I don't know if that's helpful and I, I just want to ask, um, like Linda and Deb in Area 23, the areas that we're doing, it seems like the driving from site to site um, isn't going to be an actual active birding time. So would I not count that? I would just count the time that we're in the field looking for birds. If it takes us five minutes to drive to a cemetery, it seems like we shouldn't count the five minutes to the cemetery, just count the time in the cemetery that we're birding. Do I have that right or? I'm gonna chime in here. You do have it right. Because if you're driving and birding, that's different, okay? If you're right. just going to another spot and you aren't paying attention to anything you see, you don't count that. Okay. So it's actively birding. Well, so the driving time, to be clear, in our group, we do actively bird while we're driving. Yeah. So right. you need to count that. We count it as driving time or as as what? As driving time, and, and, and but it's birding time. Okay. And what I mean, the dri this is birding driving time. I should put that when you're actively oh. birding and driving, not just moving okay. around to another place. We don't have to record how long we're driving and not birding. We don't no, have to record that. No, right. no. Right. Forget those if you're going times. at like 40 miles per hour through traffic, you're probably not birding. So yeah, yeah. Get those times out, I think, is kind right. of what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use your odometer. Use your odometer. Okay. You Just know, so at the start bird. of the day, you uh that's what I have usually done. And my David is like, okay, I started zero. And then it, because in, in David's area, wherever we're driving, we're birding. Cause you know, we got fields that we're looking at. Okay. Here's some other things that a leader does. that we're talking about one is to submit the, your numbers in the Google form. You need to make sure that if you get rare birds in your group, you agree that it should be submitted as a rare bird. We're trying to have that decision made by the team leader, not that the person just sends it up and you're like, I know it wasn't that bird, right? We need some decision making on your part that that is, should be submitted for a rare bird or not. I give an example. Um, a team one time, um, and some of you have probably heard this. The guy, the person wanted it was a guy wanted to submit a rare bird report because he said I saw that ruby crown kinglet just sitting there. It was like ten minutes. I watched it. I was like, it was a very sick ruby crown kinglet, <laughs> or, but no ruby crown kinglet that we know of is sitting for 10 minutes and not doing anything else. So you may have to talk to that person and sort it out, the behavior, et cetera. But that was one we were not sending upward so that Scott's reading about some ruby crown kinglet sitting somewhere. So that's what I'm saying. You need to work if you have people to sort, help them sort out why wasn't it this bird? Why was it something else? And then it, the best thing to do is also if you have photos or your people have photos to send them into us, uh, even if they're not a rare bird, but they just have some really good photos, send them on because we use them in things like this. Uh, and and also when we do the final compilation, we'll use people's photos. It doesn't have to be a rare bird, just so, you know, some really neat pictures of how they pass the day. I keep going backwards. Um, and so then in the end, we're talking about the Google form and, and really 
putting it all together for the compilation. And the other thing is reminding people to attend the meeting on Monday night, uh, where uh, it's pretty good what we do on Monday nights, even though we aren't doing the potluck, which was always great. Uh, but people, each area gets to tell their story, doesn't have to be the leader. It could be somebody else on your team. Uh, uh, we try and get new people to speak up and, and say what was great for them. What was it like? Uh, I think, uh, Henry, you one time talked about the best thing was this like bobcat at the end of the day. You know, it doesn't have to be a bird story. Okay. But it's something special. I remember Mike Locker had a story once. He said, I have five, uh, I don't know. I want to say like goldfinches, some sort more common bird. And then some hawk swooped in and killed one, ate one or grabbed it. And he said, do I report four or do I report five? And it was like, you know, he said I had five, but 10 minutes later, I only had four. Um, and so it's really just, I like, we're like, I don't, Mike, decide, you know, this is, you're the leader, you decide. But this is part of the fun part of like, tell your story, right? It doesn't have to be uh, exactly perfect. So those are the things that I think of as the, the leader responsible for ability for the leader. Same, we cover pretty well. Um, okay. I just have one thing to note, Janice. Yeah. Sorry. Um, one thing I find that gets kind of forgotten in the field when people are counting is the compilation form has real specific requirements for like flocks of geese or flocks of crows. Um, like you have to record the time you see them. I don't know if like the direction they're heading, but that might be something. Um, oh. And ask for like different sexes, like if you see bald eagles or harriers. So just something like look at the form and make sure you let your um, team members know that some species require some extra documentation. Uh, that's correct. Correct. Um, and I have to tell you, let me tell you a story about those that that thing those why we asked for that that's a historical mono question report the immatures and the and the adults and we do not need to report it that way to national audubon but our club wants to know our our thing so and and it is valuable in this way um scott you probably remember this maybe two years ago there were 35 harriers, northern harriers observed, including immatures. In reality, our circle has a lot of really good northern harrier habitat, right? But we also have them flying from one side of the river to the other side or one area to the other area. And so we asked for those times and I, uh, was lucky to have Jan Ortiz, who used to be the compiler, look at the areas, look at the at the Harriers and decide these were probably the same ones, one flying from another area to the other. And so they count in the area, all right? But we took 10 off when we submitted the numbers to the National Audubon because they were duplicates. But that that doesn't diminish what your, your team members saw in your area. I think some of you might remember three or four years ago, we had either turkey vultures or black vultures and they went across from like area 10, 11, 12. And they were all like you know, within a half hour of each other. Well, we did not report 12 to the National Audubon, 12 turkey vultures. We reported four. There was a black of... vulture that was like, I think I texted Sam and Marcia yeah. about it and they caught it like 30 seconds later. So ah, we knew it was pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So you know, those it's things like crows that come up the river. They're either on one side of the river or there could be they keep going up the river. <laughs> That's right. And or you or at the end of the day you see them all coming back. And so you're like you counted 220 going up. So you, and it's you and, need to take you the yeah. time that you see them, jot it That's down. Right. So and those are things we do we to not over-report for the National Audubon, but the individual team can still count it and needs to count it. In terms but of thanks, the, sorry. I, have, I, have, I just want to say thanks, sure. excuse me, Sam. Thanks, Katie, for bringing that up. Yeah, and on that note, 
is there a document somewhere that lists out like, for instance, that we want to keep track of what the age and sex of the X type of species were? Because I know it's all in the form that we submit, but like online, is there just like a list of like, yes, take note of what direction the flights of Canada's are or crow roosts and like, just so we can have like a reference in the field? No, I, I know we don't have it. It's all okay. in our mind. Ask, it's all in my mind. But Janice, like until last year, the paper checklist that you had, it actually listed um, yeah. the specifics. But the new checklist for this year, it doesn't like um, there aren't additional fields for what time was this flight and what were these sub adult bald eagles or adults? And is there a reason you took that out or is there like another version of the form that we could use for tracking? We'll go back to the old form. Steph, did you hear that? Yeah, so I was, I didn't have time. I was thinking about using the new list and the old format and merging them. I have not done that yet. So if anyone has time and wants to do it, great. But oh, we'll just um, use the old one. We'll go back and yeah. stick the old one up. Yep. Now I got to see, do you have an old one handy? If you do, send it to me. I do. I color coded my last year in order of which species we're most likely to find in our area. Okay, so if you just can email it to me, I'll, and I'll put it up and everybody can use it. Thank you. This is why I see we have these meetings. Okay, so I think we're pretty clear on the, what the leader does. Okay. But what about we have these other things that can happen that you want to think about? or have in mind? Anybody have any things that they're wondering about? Merlin. What about Merlin? What about if you're sick that morning and you can't go? So here were my things for like, what about? Like, what are things that could happen that you want to at least have thought about ahead of time? I love Merlin and I hate Merlin for the CBC. It is not acceptable for someone on your team to say, Merlin said, you know, this other team is over here, not with you. Merlin said we had an American woodcock. I don't know, I'm trying to come up with this, right? We didn't see it, but that's what Merlin said. You cannot put that on your list. We need to have visual or visual verification or somebody needs to have heard that bird. And hopefully more than once. Because again, they're gonna need to do a rare bird report and we have Scott deciding <laughs> whether what they say right up is acceptable as a rare bird. Uh, two years ago, a year ago or two years ago, um, National Audubon came out with a sort of a statement about Merlin. We have a participants meeting uh, tomorrow night and we will tell them this, that the, if they're using Merlin, they must have seen the bird or heard the bird to report it just so so you know um what about i'm going to skip the cbc web page i'm going to show you that what about the rare bird report do you know how to get it to people do you know how to explain help their your people it's in your form it's also i'm going to show you where it is on the cb pay cbc page so what happens if some of your team members can't cover or can't participate in the areas that you the area you have? Stuff happens. Okay. Don't go crazy, right? We are covering as much as we can. If you have a way that you can get somebody else there, but you just need to breathe and move on. Janice, maybe this is a good time to tell uh, remind us about uh birding on the 
on the before the uh, before the Sunday, like on on Friday, you can bird, or and that would be included in your count. Uh, is that it, correct or no? It only is included as a count week bird. It, no numbers. There could be a a hundred snow okay. geese. It could be well, let's say a hundred snow geese in your yard, and not, none on count day. It just all we put in is CW. We don't even put in the number. Okay. Yeah. And personally, I don't like count week because it never counts for anything national. I mean, it, it doesn't show up oh. as a bird. You have National Audubon just like, oh, yeah, it's in that area. But there's nothing really done with it. All right. So that's my personal opinion. OK. Um, what about if your numbers are messed up for somebody or your time or effort? Talk to me. All right. We'll work it. We'll figure it out. And, you know, uh, if we. You know, we'll take an estimate. We, maybe we talk to the, the person who submitted and try and see if it's clear. But, you know, this is a volunteer opportunity uh, that you're volunteering for. And and we want the best we can get, but we're not going to make ourselves crazy. A and um, if if you're not able to participate, you know, maybe you have somebody you can uh, name to sort of can you help coordinate, organize? Uh, or worst case scenario, you say, we're just not covering our area. We've had that happen. So don't, you know, it's like, we don't really want it to happen. Uh, but sometimes that is what happens. Or if you, you know, ahead of time, like on Friday, you know, like you've got COVID, you're not going out Sunday. Maybe I can get somebody else from another team to cover for you. So use us. Questions on that? Mm -hmm. And the the last thing on the slides is have fun. This is a, you know, we're a successful CBC uh, in terms of the, the amount of participation because we have included people who aren't birders, who help with their eyes and ears, and we talk about being outdoors, conservation, and having fun. And and then slowly, many of those people are starting to get into birding, but but that's the big difference. Okay, now I'm going to unshare this and go to. All right. Here's the map. This is the map that's on our web page. Same map. What was the address, Scott, for the Cape May? Scott's not here. Yeah. He said wood, Woodlawn. One second. Hang on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to my computer and no one's answering because I forgot <laughs> to read it. Uh, it's 10 Woodbridge. Woodbridge Road. In South Hadley. Is it South Hadley or you said you said South Hadley, uh, right? Hadley. Okay, so you put it in. Here's the red dot. Okay, then we need to make it's in the it's in the circle. Do you see what I'm doing? You can. Yeah. So you if this is the wonderful thing about our 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 map, you can put in the address. Whose area is it? I gotta go back and find the red dot. I think it's Sue and Sally. Let's look at that, Jens. So let me go back here. Isn't it the big one? So here's the red dot, okay? That's Mount Holyoke, next to Orchards. Yeah, you gotta go So far. this is area 17. Here oh, you see the little area. It's not easy to see. And here's little area 16. So Sue and Sally, what are we going to look for? <laughs> Taylor Sky. Well, there's a female. What Kate is that we're looking for? Cape May Warbler. Oh, what? Peter, I don't have a lot of info on it. Um, I went it's an immature, today. right? Is it immature? Well, it's a female immature, whatever. Okay. It's not very colorful, but 
I went there the other day. I was birding in that area, and I saw the post on eBird. I forget the person's name that reported it. I don't know if they live there or they're friends or whatever. So, but I drove in there, and there are some feeders next to this like wall of junipers, and I parked there for five minutes, you know, just kind of seeing what was going to happen, and bam, you know, the warbler came in. Wow. It's not a lot of, um, it's not a great parking area. And again, I don't know, I don't know the uh, status uh, of, of whether that's the mm -hmm. homeowner that reported it had beautiful pictures in eBird. So that was not the, uh, that was not the case. And, um, oh, oh, which, Len, which person? right there. I don't think that's the right address. I think it's, no, it's like, drive. it's, I'm looking at this. Okay. I'm going to. Said Ted sharing, they mentioned it's a Littleman, which is not the right address, I think. Here's the ad, here's the list 10 Worthington Drive, oh, South Worthington. Hadley. I'm sorry, Worthington. And here's the picture of the Cape May. Okay, so who, here we go who again. reported it? Who is the person? He's in, uh, he's Lee. a birder, Mark. he's a good birder. He's in the money more your burgers. Okay. He's... I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to go back and share. And this is... Back to the map and see if it's in there. Yeah. We forgot to mention Eric passing away this year, too. Oh, yeah. Because I think Lee, um, Lee got him in with him. Mm -hmm. It still is. Yeah. No, it's out. It's out. Okay. That's what I thought when I saw it with Lee. I said he's outside of it okay sorry about that that's okay Worthy. okay okay right, so don't worry about that I'm maybe <laughs> maybe it'll fly could in we, uh could we send somebody to sort of drive it northwards <laughs> uh if we formed a line of people and sort of walk through that neighborhood hey with some fire I'm just kidding i'm just kidding of course that's uh highly, un <laughs> highly unethical okay Matthew, thank you very much for giving us the right uh, checklist in question. Okay, other things that could be useful, um, and we'll talk about these to. This is our web page on the Hampshire Bird Club. It's here under events, Christmas bird count. Anybody want to help update this web page? Feel free to go for it. Gets a little bit of history, the date, uh, where this, where the center is some uh who can sign up to be do what uh and then the next page is the forms feeders maps and history and here we have the list of common birds which is the one we don't like so we're going to change it um here is the rare bird forms should any of your people need it it's also it's a fillable PDF. Here's a guide, a good guide that I would suggest all of you to read about uh, doing your party hours and and time. Mm. And I would encourage your people to use a dashboard sign. They can put in their car, they're parking the car on the on the side of the uh, side of the road. Um, this map. I'm going to give kudos to Kevin Barnes. We had the, uh, I don't understand Google Earth and Google Map, how they do it, K something called uh, a KMZ or KML, and he converted it to this. And we're one of the few people who have a map like, like this. And any of your people, or you have anybody who wants, they want to know if they're in the circle, they have something good, go up here to the magnifying glass and put in your address. Mm -hmm. Okay. The last thing I want to show talk to you about is trip reports. Helping, um, helping you get the right numbers uh, of your of the birds that your people have. Uh, eBirds trying to help us out in fifty percent of the way, which is on the birds. So if you have a team that wants to do a, a trip report to give you, they go to, they sign in. This is done on the website. 
So it's very hard to do it on a phone because you need to open the website and not just the app. So go over here. These happen to be my birds. Uh, you hit on the lower left here, trip reports. Click on that. Say I'm going to create one. Put in the name. So you say uh, Mono CBC. The date is the 15th. All day the 15th. Uh, you can decide how you want it. Um, I would say initially you may say you want it public just to make it simpler because if you don't understand what the other things are. And then you say create the trip. So here's my trip. I have no checklist because that day has not come. And I haven't, it hasn't come and I haven't submitted anything. But here I want to show you my Quabbin count for last year and how you're this why I think this would work for people. We made this uh, trip report. This shows you that we only had 26 species, but we had nine checklists. On the map, it shows you where were your stops. This is one of these where you drive, we look in between, then we drive and we count in certain spots. Here are all the checklists for, for where we were, how many we saw, just like a regular eBird report. Then we added here our driving, walking, etc. And then we sent this to our team leader, who was David Spector, and he had what he needed. So I suggest <laughs> that you have your teams do this, something like this, because it's if they're going to enter an eBird anyway, it's consolidated. eBird has helped us in doing the trip report. They aren't helping us out on how to do the time and the miles, et cetera. Uh, David, we did, we did some of this, David Peak Jones, we did some of this for you last year. Uh, the team, Brad and Heather and I. I think I have it here. I'll go back. Uh, let's see. Here's what we did for, for David. Here's the stops we made. There were four people. We were still learning. You can see we didn't put very complete information here. But here's what we could submit. And he, we're one of those groups that had a zillion Canada geese coming across the river. We know somebody else had counted close to our number also. So Janice, every stop that you made, you 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 created a new checklist. Yeah. And or so if we walked, yeah. And uh, so it would be all in the trip report. Yeah. All the places. Wow. What did we see here? When we saw one place, we saw one turkey. So we counted it, right? Um, and this is the is the happened to be the solar display on Huntington Road that we walked. So we did that, and see, so we have say here how many were in our group. There were four of us. It took us an hour. It two point. Right. When you said that you added the driving miles, hours birded, etc., um, mm -hmm. is that in the comments section or? Yes, yeah, so it would be in the comments or the narrative. Okay. Somewhere so that it would show up easily for the that you were sending on to the leader. And that can be added on while you're doing it on your phone. Yeah. Or can you do that? Like, okay. Well. You need to set up the, <clears throat> yes, the narrative part can be done on the phone. You need mm -hmm. to set up the trip report. It's easiest to set it up on the web page. Right. You can do it on your phone, but you have to go to the eBird web page and right. sign in. You can't go from the app. How do you get the 
location dots onto that map. It's the same location that you put in an eBird. You said, where am I? You know, oh. and it asks you where you are. Boom. Oh, I see. You yeah. can do it on your phone. And you then enter your eBird. You enter the trip report that you created on your oh. on your computer. Then you do everything okay. else on your phone. Oh. And it'll show up uh, on the web page. Hmm. So it's basically just combining the all the individual trips that you had. Yeah. Into and if you work. have multiple people eBirding in each party, make sure they all share the same checklist. Like make a checklist, share it with their usernames. Otherwise, those words get double counted if people are submitting multiple checklists from the same location. Yeah. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Make it deeper, repeat what you just said. Um, it counts every, everything that's submitted, but if multiple people in the same party are submitting separate checklists to eBird, then those birds get double counted. So the way around that is to make sure that only one person in each team submits an eBird checklist, and then you share it with anyone else's username afterwards. So then that list gets copied over to their account, but the species don't get double counted. Yeah. Okay. The usual, if you're doing a group, right? That's a... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're saying actually do the checklist on your phone. Yeah. You All, all you're doing... Um, is setting up the trip report and the, on the computer. The that's main right. Uh, this is all okay. you're doing is this. Yeah. On your computer. I got it. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. And then uh, let me go back here. So here is my trip report. And here I can edit and I can add people. Who are the people who are going to be part of my team? Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, it works great, but it might not work for everybody. So, you know, you might have one or two people are ready to take this on and the others are like, oh God, you know, <laughs> we're not good at this. And so, you know, you know don't frustrate them. It's Any more questions on your lives the last few years? So highly recommend. And the other thing is that, um, when people leave your party, like if you have people like dropping out in the middle of the day and so on, that um, changes the effort per person you're putting in. And so the the easiest way to do that is um, just start a new eBird checklist every time somebody leaves or joins and accurately like keep note of how many people were birding mm. with you at that time. and. Yeah, we usually have people dropping in and out or just birding in the morning, and that makes things a lot easier. Yeah, you don't want, I mean, Bill, you might want one continuous eBird report, okay, or, or, you know, sort of, or, or several, but you don't want to say, you know, eBird doesn't want you to go 12 miles in an eBird report, right? Yeah, here, here, and here. So you still want to stick with the, what eBird wants in how you're reporting and the one way you know the not the back and forth you know i i looped around i went in and then i went out uh so you want to keep those miles correct any more questions too much information you're like oh why did i sign up for this job <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you it wasn't this complicated when i first started when i first started Mary Alice and Jan Ortiz telephoned or handwritten a note to everybody who was participating. And I don't do that, needless to say. But I'm going to show you one more thing just so he's like, how do we keep track of this? How do I keep track? This is a, this is a, in Google Sheets, except I have too many things open. And so we keep, it's color coded. Let me go back. 
All right. It's anyway, it's color coded by who does what, who's participating, who didn't par can't participate, who were the 20, 23 participants who didn't. So as we get move along and like, who am I inviting this year? I went back to all the 2023 participants and who did not participate. Because if you look at this year, you have people who are like, they're away, whatever, and, but they should be invited next year. Okay. Now, I just wanted, the last thing is to say, on the 14th, I'll send you the form, the Google form. Uh, this is it. No zeros. Do not give us zeros. There are a lot of rare bird reports in here. So you, you know, somebody, you need one. Uh, but easier for you if you have your people go find the rare bird report on our webpage. And if you have suggestions for how we can simplify understanding well, let me hear. Here's like the flights of the geese and the crows and the harriers and the bald eagles. And then, you know, we started counting dabbling ducks and gulls that nobody knew who they were. Um, and we count every critter you see. Uh, we've had people count woolly bears they found three woolly bears crossing <laughs> <laughs> somebody you know weird stuff but if you have suggestions for how for us to improve the effort or how to help the participants improve the effort we're more than willing to to listen to you we're meeting with them tomorrow night and uh we will talk to them about uh keeping track of time but since they don't always know who they're who they're working with, uh, it could be somewhat confusing. And I don't, we won't want to confuse them more than they might be. And, and that's all I have. Okay. That's good. <laughs> thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. Questions? I'm going to drop a link in the chat for our event. Um, in case you have any other beginners, we're looking for a team, especially if they're immunocompromised. Okay. Um, they can just drop in. We have a event from 10 to one, the Bramble Hill Farm. All right. And David Peak Jones uh, said uh, he has his primitive worksheet. David, you to tell us what you wanted to say, what you said there. Oh, I, I, I have a worksheet. I, I had one last year that I wasn't very happy with. I I worked on it again this year. It's just a piece of paper that allows people to write. It gives them a worksheet so that they have places to write down. So every time they get in the car and start driving, they, there's a box for the odometer reading when they start and a box when they end. Um, when they start walking, there's a time for them to record the time they start walking and the time they end walking. So it's just a, I have a, a nightmare with this stuff because I, forget to write anything down and then I'm left at the end of the day not really <laughs> not really knowing what my effort was so uh, if anybody wants it yes. it's work it's working it's work in progress if you just email that email so, address in the chat I will try to send you what I have or, or David um, send it to me and I'll send it out to all of you and then you yeah, have all right. it yeah. All right, I'll send it to Janice. It's in uh, like some weird open source software because I'm not prepared to pay Microsoft $120 a year just for the privilege of whatever it is they're selling. So hopefully your uh, word processing software can open my open source file. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll send it to Janice and she can send it out. Okay. Okay, before you leave, I have one question. Historically, you know, as we start a, a CBC time, I have contacted everyone, or the compiler here in this year has contacted everyone who wants to, to participate, as opposed to most CBCs. And Scott, I think you can verify, it's it's the leader who then figures out who they have and who they want. 
And I don't know, then at some point I send you, here's who you have, here's who has responded. And um, I don't know if that's really the practice that we've had is the practice that we would recommend it to be continued or not. I like the practice of you doing that. I also reach out to people that I know who aren't connected with the bird club who are interested and sometimes get help that way. But I like that you do this. Okay. And I just, um, I think I really trust Janice to have an eye on the bigger picture and know how to make sure everyone's um, feel, everyone feels included and safe. And um, we're really going to, I don't know what we're going to do without you. Mm. Um, I know you said this is your last year. It is. Um, yeah. And um, I was going to offer that I, I kind of wrote up a protocol uh, last year for how to use Merlin Sound ID responsibly for the count. Um, and I can send that to you. It's just like a checklist of things to go through. Do that, and I'll send that out also. If you want to send it to me, make it deeper, I'll just pass it along. I have a, a quick question. Sure, Molly. It we used to have to collect money to pay to National Audubon Society to do the CBC. We don't have to do that anymore, right? No. Um, gosh, I think that stopped like pre-COVID. Yeah. That's a long time ago. We haven't done it. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> no, no. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you could donate to them, but to the Christmas yeah. bird. And I say if you're going to donate to the National Audubon, you know, donate to the Christmas bird count as opposed to mm -hmm. the, just the National Audubon. And, and you know, we, Jeff LeBaron, who uh, is the leader of area, I think 31, he has been up until this past June, the head of the Christmas bird count in all of those 2,600 count circles. Oh. Who replaced him? Didn't he step down this year? He did step down. Um, I don't know. I mean, I may know that I got an email once from somebody like that, but. Okay. Um, oh, one other thing. If anyone's using a trip report, um, you, I don't know, if you're someone who eBirds often and let's say you're leaving the house in the morning and you notice like a feeder bird, you can remove those checklists later on. It, since it's automatically counting everything throughout the day, at the end of the day, just go and take a look and make sure that everything you're counting is within your area or circle um, because that's generally how I set it up to automatically count within those 24 hours. Yeah. And, you know, I, I only talked about counting during the day. We have people who are owling, uh, who owl. Uh, Bill, I know you go out. Scott, you do some. Uh, we have other people. Mary has heard owls during the day in places. Uh, th they want you to keep track of your owling just separately in the, in the form. Um, you know, so, so it's less, and you don't have to, it's less complicated for them, but they do want that separate. I assume it's illegitimate to use calls to call owls in, right? No, uh, not, at, not at night. Uh, no. Oh, it's okay? I yeah. think yeah. most owlers do that. Uh -huh. well, every owler I know in our count, I think uses, or they're waiting okay. forever and nothing happens. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Janice, I have a question about um, rare birds. I know we all grumble when we look at the rare bird form. And um, I was wondering if, like, if we have a recording or pictures or video, do you think um, that means we can get out of explaining yes. exactly yes. what options we're using yes. and what reference yes. guides and all that? Yes. We can just like leave those out, right? If you have a picture, you do not need to sub you need to submit that okay the picture and uh unless it's a really blurry crappy picture uh and we still don't know then send it, it to sam zang and he'll probably be able to id it anyway yeah <laughs> that's what we do but we do that's what henry did henry lee this i guess he said was waving away no that's why we want pictures because those reports are like i think they're they're deadly uh, they take up time. Sometimes they're not very accurate. You know, they aren't say, you know, or people just say, I think I'll write what it said in that field guide about this bird, right? We just have a lot of people on our team who aren't super familiar with things like 
field guides, reference materials, and um, you know, it asks about your previous experience with a particular yeah. species. And a lot of the time, um, that kind of thing is easier for us to describe. Um, yeah. But a picture will do instead of all of that. A picture and a recording of the of a call or a song. We've used those also. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, last question. Um, something that like I learned, like Harvey Allen keeps um, saying that we all tend to undercount things. I mean, I know I do. Throughout the year, I tend to be conservative, but um, one time we were together for the Christmas bird count and he was like, there's probably a hundred jungles in there and you only put down like 10. Um, and yeah, I guess I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. For the Christmas bird count, I know we want numbers that are closer to the real population. We're never gonna be able to find or count all of the birds in the area. So at what point do you know that you're being conservative versus realistic? Anybody else have thoughts on, on as they consider when they're finding those birds in the field and what they number they decide to put in? We've all done, we've all made some decision about the what we've seen and how many are there. Matt, you look like you're thinking about this. I usually have a, like a blackbird flock with like 10,000 birds or something in, in my area. And I see it and I cry every time because I hate counting birds. And with that many, they're just moving around and it just really stresses me out. And I want to do justice to you know, the data collection, but it's also really stressful. You just do the best you can do. You know, if you see a blackbird flock and you kind of take it by hundreds or however you want to break it down and then just, okay, if you saw 5,400, saw 5,400. And then you <laughs> you just move on. I, I wouldn't, if someone else comes up and says, no, there was 10,000 there. I said, well, they might be right, but you took the time to count it. So you go with what you had. Can, I can make it, I don't know if this is useful or not. I've never actually done it with birds, but if you're like estimating how many beans there are in a giant jar, you look at one small area and like count the number in that little area like this and then make it into a cube and count how many are in that. And then like how many of those cubes make up that area. And then just kind of like how many of those are there in the whole thing. I would do that with birds too. Yeah, uh, eBird has like a bird counting 101 page that explains all of that. So it's just something that like makes me anxious. Like I, I know how to do it, but mm -hmm. um, the numbers are more important for the Christmas bird count because that data has been used for so many scientific studies. Um, you want to get it right. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, my guess is that overall, we are probably only identifying 10% of the birds that are out there mm -hmm. on that day that, you know, they're not singing, they're hidden. We don't cover all the areas. And, uh, but that doesn't mean we want to inflate what we see or, you know, and so we, we have to go with what we see and National Audubon, I believe, understand that you understand that's how we're counting. Not like, okay, I, I think if four days ago there were 100 juncos in that tree. How come I only see three today? Because today there are only three that you see. And this, so it's only three that you're reporting. I mean, it it's, can be, right? But, but you report what you see. And, and you know, when you hear, the other part around hearing, it's like, well, how many did I hear? Right? Mm -hmm. Can I really separate all the, you know, those, calls or chip notes or whatever, and we don't ever hear that many w during the CBC in general versus other times of the year. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't worry about that. I have like hundreds of thousands of sparrows in my count area and most of them are just like bird only. So I get nervous, um, but good to know. The this, other thing is oh. to have somebody else go to your area where you have a zillion birds another time and say, so let's, what do you say, right? So you have a frame of reference and you know, you're saying 
10,000 and they said 40. And they're like, well, there's some, something wrong, some difference, right? And maybe they, but that's another thing you might try, but you, you put in what you put, what you see and that, and you did your best effort. Thank you. Um, okay. Is there a protocol for reporting? Um, so I'm in the, I live within the count area, but this is not the area I count, but there's been a uh, turkey vulture hanging around, for example. So if I see that on the count day, I feel like Dave McLean covers this area, Dave and Kim. Um, should I just let them know? If I would let them know. I would let them know. Okay. You know, I saw one here at this place, you know, at this time. Okay. Thank you very much for hanging around and uh, thank you for all your effort and good luck on Sunday. Thank you. See, see you on Monday. <laughs> Bye. On Monday, is it? Yeah. Well, what time? <laughs> thank you. Monday? Yeah. Seven. Seven. Okay. All right. I'll send you a reminder. Don't worry. Thanks. <laughs>